welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, today we're going to be talking about one of the finest Hi-Fi products money can buy. Yes. Well, something like that anyway. <laughs> yes. We're going to be talking about this, which is my gorgeous Sony STS730ES tuner. Wow. Which is just a beautiful, beautiful piece of engineering. Very, very few tuners are better than this on the market. Yeah. This is just fantastic. So um, that's going to be around uh, late 80s, I guess, yeah, is it? Yeah, Something late like 80s. Yeah. Um, this was, I didn't buy this new. Um, used to retail these, used to sell these. Uh, just fantastic. It was, um, this was an eBay purchase. I think I paid £65 for it. Something like wow. that, which is an absolute veritable bargain because it's just a gorgeous sounding AMFN tuner. Wow. Um, and it's got a few bells and whistles and a few sort of gadgets on it and presets yep. and uh, all of that jazz, but actually just sounds absolutely terrific. Um, unlike some of the other tuners around at the time, mm. it's a little bit more forgiving with regard to the aerial. Yeah. So you don't really need to have, you know, this sort of massive dipole on your house to suck in all of the signal. Yeah. Um, it actually works, works brilliantly. And I would probably argue that this is uh, one of the best uh, uh, tuners Sony ever made. What do you think of that? No, I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> and what evidence do you have to suggest okay. that this not be the, one of the best Sony tuners well, ever made? Well, exhibit one. Oh, Jesus, it's heavy. You are so annoying sometimes. I think this is yes. the best Sony tuner ever made. I'm going to, without hitting the microphone, I'm going to put that down, I think. Yes, yeah. okay. This is, um, uh, this is a, a tuner for grown-ups, Mike. So uh, you can't buy this on eBay for 65 quid. I, I really hate it when I have to agree with you. Um, that is one of the finest tuners ever made. That's the Sony... STS 770ES, yeah, uh, which is a heavyweight model. Yeah, as you can my, see, uh, I'm sort of struggling uh, yes. to uh, to pick this up because the damn thing is so incredibly heavy. Yes, can um, I can I tell you my slight regret, uh, which is um, when I when I bought this for my sort of very very cheap eBay bargain, and, and when it turned up out of the box, it was immaculate and brand new. Um, I'm still actually very disappointed that I just didn't spend a little bit more and then go with that one. Yeah. Because that is a very, very special piece of hi-fi, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I think it's one of the best sounding tuners I've, I've ever heard. Certainly one of the best sounding tuners I've ever reviewed. Um, and um, not a lot of people know it either. No, actually, so, that's why they're so, so yeah. uh, well, until this episode, they're so reasonably priced on eBay. Yeah. Um, so... You're probably asking kind of the million dollar question, you know, why, why, would you, why would you even bother to buy one? Why would you feel like you need a proper hi-fi tuner? And actually, it comes back a little bit to sort of, um, you know, back in the day when we used to be reading hi-fi magazines like they were going out of fashion, then it was all about the live broadcasts on BBC Radio 3, yeah. wasn't it? And in fact, that was probably as good a source component as you could possibly get back in the day. Yeah. Uh, because it was just live, wasn't it? You know, if you had sort of yeah. whatever it was, you're live from the Royal Albert Hall, live from the proms, whatever, yeah. then, then it sounded absolutely superb. Now, for me, the modern day equivalent of this is when you get something like, um, I don't know, say Chris Evans, for example, on Virgin, and they'll get bands in the studio yeah. singing live, yeah. actually, through one of these amazing tuners. That is just the most... Uh, astonishingly good hi-fi yeah um, it really is it's, yeah. it's just you know because hi-fi is all about getting close to, to the source component yeah it's pretty close isn't it yeah it's pretty close well I think um, I think today um, live broadcasts now are less good than they used to be I agree with that um, and that's largely because the the uh, analog tuner network is largely digitized in the back end sure um, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily terrible but um, you know, at one point, let's say in the late seventies, when we were originally getting into hi-fi, um, you could hear last night of the proms on Radio Three, and it would be an all analog, uh, you know, uh, recording and the the desk and the processing and the transmitter upload and all that kind of stuff. Yes, would be completely analog and obviously live, and even though FM stereo has a kind of limited bandwidth of 30 hertz to 15 kilohertz um so it's not as wide as even cd and certainly less wide than, than vinyl you know because uh, a good cartridge would go up to 25 kilohertz or something like that or reel to reel um yes. so you yeah. had a, a slightly constrained bandwidth on fm stereo um 
but still um, you could get fantastic quality absolutely amazing and there were some glorious tuners from the, those kind of uh, those days like the well the, the obvious one that everyone talks about is the leak trough line mm. um, which is the valve uh, a valve tuner a great sounding valve tuner and when I was working at Hi-Fi World um, Noel Keywood had one he's a huge trough line fan I bet. Um, and uh, he'd got a sort of upgraded decoder I can't remember who did the, who did that but I remember listening to Jazz FM in in you know central London uh, with his trough line with the an aerial going right up to onto the top of his house um, <laughs> and it sounded absolutely brilliant yes, you know? um, yeah, yeah. so the trough line was a great tuner and another classic from 10 years later was the Mar that's what the Yamaha CT7000 yes uh, which was a kind of big 70s thing with silver uh, fr uh, front facier and big tuning knob and everything and that's a legendary solid state uh, tuner largely discrete components and not ic based um, and in the modern era you've got things like magnum dyna labs which have got a really good reputation uh, but i've heard all of those uh, and reviewed uh, i've certainly had a, a trough line and a, a yamaha ct7000 in my system and a magnum dyna lab md90 <laughs> I still think this is is really up there with them. It's, it's and, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So, so in in this kind of era, in that so nineteen ninety era, yeah. Then the other ones to, in the in the mix were for me were the the Creek tuner, yeah, uh, which matched the forty forty amp and the forty one forty, um, which I thought was astonishingly good. Yeah. But the Creek needed. You know, Noel's yeah. aerial. You it know, did, it yeah. Needed, it needed to have an aerial in space. Seven, you know. seven element exactly. aerial with a kind of rotating uh, yes. thingy that you could point at the transmitter with. Yes. A, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other one, of course, was the because the creek was cheaper. This this was somewhere in the middle yeah. of the of the creek and the name the name uh, and that uh, Nato, one. Nato one, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was a legendary yeah. tuner. But, it I mean, really is. Yeah. Proper yeah. money. Proper. proper Nato money. one was fantastic. That was like two yeah. grand though. Yeah, back which is when was, these were sort of, well, yours was about three hundred quid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think the the creek one was probably one hundred and sixty or something around there. Yeah. So, and also, don't remember the don't forget the Nitec CTA. 252 oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a receiver but it had a fantastic it fm tuner yeah. in it yeah it was so, brilliant yeah so that's actually that's a superb product yeah i think we've talked about this before and we've probably said we should try and get one in for a review because yeah. I, I love that nitec i love the style of it yeah it's great yeah um so the, the interestingly we didn't <laughs> we talk about the sound quality of these but it wouldn't have been what we would have used them for, would it? We'd have used them to, to tape the top 40 yes. uh, you know, on, a, on a Sony cassette deck yeah. or a Yamaha cassette deck or something like yeah. that. Um, and then ironically, I, I don't quite know, I, I, somebody's going to correct me on this, and, and I mean, you'll probably know, what would they have used to play the songs on the top 40 in 1990? It's got to be vinyl, I sort of Absolutely. So, so they were, in, in, well, in 1990, yeah, they were uh, beginning to move to uh, CD, I think. I certainly... Uh, they would have had um, CD players, I think, at Radio One by then. Yes. But but when we were first listening to tuners in sort of 1980, 81, 78, 79, 80, they were using Technics SP tens sure. with um, uh, I, I don't know the exact um, um, tone arms would be used. Probably SME uh, three o three zero one twos or the sort of twelve inch SME things sure, sure. and Stanton 500s or something yes, you know okay, okay. Um, but um, by by sort of the late 80s it would probably be largely CD but again it would depend on the studio yeah so it would uh, be a program. pretty horrible CD player um, and we're listening to them in, in high with, <laughs> with a really revealing tuner yeah um, probably not an ideal combination well, um, well I mean the thing is you know they were still doing live um, broadcasts and I one of the great outside broadcasts that I, re I actually I, I'm Hopefully no one will come and arrest me now, but I recorded Craftworks Tribal Gathering, which was broadcast live on, I think, on Radio 1, wow. God knows when, uh, 90s, sometime in the mid early mid-90s. And I recorded it on this, um, and um, <laughs> the only thing I had that was uh, w recording very well at the time was a Sony L cassette machine. Wow. <laughs> so I got an, uh, an L cassette of Tribal Gathering recorded off air on this. How cool um, is that? Which I later uh, put onto CD. So I've probably broken a min million copyright laws, uh, sure. you know, and they can come and take me away. Well, uh, they, yes. they can take me, but they can't have my tuner. No, I'll, I'll no. give that to you, Mike. 
So perhaps, um, perhaps you you need a decent one. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps Florian could pop round himself and, and give you a, exactly. a, a reprimand yeah. and, uh, so. and have a have a seat on the sofa with us <laughs> and tell us all about his recording. But I mean, the the great thing about this tuner, it was fantastic on FM, um, but it was even really good on AM as yes. well. Yeah. Um, you know, I did a lot of listening on Radio Five Live. Um, on AM 693 and 909, and it just sounds great on AM. It sounds better on AM than some tuners I've heard on FM. Sure, you know? sure. Um, you've, got, you've, got, yeah. you've got two aerial sockets in the back of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So I, don't. I, I shall... Uh, yes, that's because it's a proper grown-up tuner, Mike. So there you go. <laughs> I'll just, uh, it's for proper serious people about music, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you now, if you like. So here we... <laughs> So, you know, it's one day you'll have one of these as well. <laughs> yeah, it might be sooner than you think. <laughs> so, I'm going to have to do it before yeah. this episode goes out because <laughs> the price of these is going to go through the roof. Exactly. Yeah, so two aerial inputs, um, selectable aerial inputs and um, selectable IF band, wide or narrow. So if you're, if you're, for example, if you're in central London, you're getting loads and loads of stations really, really um, close to one another. You know, and you sort of tune there, and there's another one, and then you tune there, and then there's another one, and so on. Um, then you can change the IF band so it'll, it'll focus very sharply on on the particular one that you're on, and not let any bleed through. So that could be with one aerial, with another aerial, you could have pointing over to I don't know some transmitter at Crystal Palace or something for Radio Three, and you know get the absolute best um, sound quality on wide band IF through uh, your you know a- antenna b um so it's, it's real real hardcore stuff would, would you like to show the hi-fi riffraff the aerial, <laughs> the aerial you're using at the moment yeah so um <laughs> the thing is there you go <laughs> do you like to hold my aerial mic <laughs> so let, let's let's increase the signal strength so this thing is pulling in half signal strength with this um piece of wet string as they call it yes um even when it was all scrunched up so, so um, yeah, that's you know, pretty. This is this is look, David will never own anything as, as horrible as this. So well, there you go. So this is mine. Look, hold, hold it. Put it over there. That's it. So there this is mine. And actually, so. with my seven seven hundred, yeah, um, it sounds really. It yeah. Still, it still yeah. picks up a hugely brilliant signal. I can't believe that, that yours is totally different to mine on the inside. No. Be, oh, whoops. Oops. And yeah. a few sort of bits of common ground. Well, I think, I'm so impressed with this. Yeah. This is an amazingly brilliant well, uh, device. I think it absolutely was. Uh, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's, it was a Past great, tense. great mid, mid-level tuner for for um, you know relative newcomers to the to <laughs> FM radio. <laughs> so as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. This has a little door there. If I can get it there, there you go, and you can uh, you can basically change the IF mode and, and um, the antenna mode, all the rest of it, and tie it to each preset. So for example, if you're on preset one, you want a, um, a narrow IF setting on antenna A, then you're on preset two, you want a wide, uh, wide setting on antenna B, you've got muting on and muting off and all the rest of it, it's all storable in each preset assignable. And um, this is at the time when RDS existed but they chose not to put fit RDS to it because they couldn't get an RDS chip that sounded good enough. So Amazing. it's basically a bespoke Sony tuner RF front end and they did great RF front ends and yours has got a very good one. Oh, this, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it is. So they're, they're always very sensitive. And um, the, the, the clever thing is that with this one, you can get uh, you know, very good signal from a piece of wet string. It's very low noise. The sensitivity, I think, is 0 0.9 microvolts with a 75 ohm aerial. So that's roughly two to three times as sensitive as most normal tuners. And yours, I think, is about one and a half. So, you know, still more sensitive by, by a good way. Mine doesn't have lots of buttons in the way of the signal path, though, like yours does. So no, so that's well, definitely going to sound a lot better. Yes, yes, that? yes, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Yes, don't worry, we'll get on eBay immediately after this episode <laughs> yes. and get you one. Yes. So, um, there you go, Mike's got tuna envy. Do you know, <laughs> can I just say something maybe which is probably a little bit sad, is nowadays the um, it's so easy to get so many different radio stations through digital. Um, I've kind of neglected this a little bit, 
but I'm gonna I'm gonna um, resurrect it and plug yeah. it in and, and, and get a proper aerial plugged in. Yeah. Because my memories of this was just so fond because yeah. it does sound absolutely fantastic yeah. when it's when it's when it's singing. Um, so I'm gonna ditch my digital for a bit. And, yeah. And um, well, the only thing I do quite like about the digital stuff is you know you can you can choose anywhere in the world, which is which I, which I, yeah. I think is quite cool. Yeah. Um, and look, I know this is sort of very gonna sound very sad, but I quite like some of the sort of um, uh, Mid America radio stations where they sort of you know talk in a really kind of slow voice and play kind of weird rock music. Yeah. Um, I love all of that. You don't get that really on, on um, BBC Radio One or Two or no. Four. Or but whatever. there's there's always shortwave for that, Mike. That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. But um, but actually, having said that, you know it's funny things, isn't it? Radio Four sounds really nice on this as well with spoken word. Yeah. You know, if you listen to a you know a play or something like that, it, it still sounds superb. Yeah. It feels like the person's in the room with you. Yeah. Um, but I do like that. I think I'm going to have to do an upgrade. Yeah. So I might I might actually pop this one on eBay. Yep. Uh, and uh, see if I one can one careful owner this. and Mike. One careful owner, <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. So look, um, I'm chuffed a bit. So we've got two examples of these and two really gorgeous examples. Yeah. They're not, not, they've been really well looked after, haven't they? Yeah. Do you find is it? Do you think it's just is this just me? Do you find that if you buy uh, used Sony equipment, the owners seem to have really taken care of them? Yeah. The ES stuff in particular. You know, owners, owners seem to really take a, a yeah. lot of pride in their yeah. Sony ES equipment. Yeah. We've talked about the CDPX 77ES yeah. on many occasions as being one of our favourite pieces of hi-fi. I, I don't think I've ever seen one in bad condition. Yeah, well, just, whereas with uh, old Technic stuff, it's been uh, stolen from the back of someone's <laughs> van, hasn't it? Something. <laughs> so. Excellent. <laughs> comment. There we go. Yeah. So, and on that bombshell. And on that bombshell. <laughs> So there we are. Look, we, we two highly recommended tuners to yeah. be fair at ridiculously low prices yeah. um, on on the second hand yeah. market. Yeah, I mean you can get Nothing. one of these, or you could do before. Well, at the time of speaking, this yeah. is about three hundred quid. Yeah, um, uh, and, um, and these are about seventy five. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, and and also there's not much to go wrong in them. I mean, this is going to last you a lifetime. Yeah, you know, there's nothing really to wear out or die, and it still feels as 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 new as it as it did. You know, straight out of the box back yeah. in 1990. And the 730, which is yours, is a great sort of en ed mid price entry level ish mid price tuner, super value on eBay. Yes. Uh, this is a bit more hardcore, uh, but um, you know, it it it's getting there or thereabouts to some of the great tuners I've heard. It's not quite there. Um, but it has a very clean and precise sound, very detailed. It's got a tonal warmth and colour that a lot of modern tuners just don't have. Very they good. sound processed and plasticky. Yes. Uh, and this sounds very natural, but it's got the the advantage of, of that fantastic kind of super sensitive front end that will pull virtually anything in. And, and, yeah. and if you're using a streamer, and say, for example, all you listen to is, is Radio 2 or Radio 4 or something yeah. like that, then you'd be far better off with one of these plugged into a streamer. Yeah. You really yeah. would. A hundred percent. Yeah. So there we are. There we are. Let's do, um, let's, let's talk about yours then. Uh, cause obviously I, I do have to bow to the fact that it is a amazing tuner and maybe a bit better than mine. Um, let's, uh, let's do a Mike and Dave's hi-fi riffometer. Yeah. Uh, for me, 10. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to hurt, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to give it nine because I haven't got one. Okay. Should we, <laughs> as soon as I get one. Should we rate ten. that one? Yeah, so I'm going to give this ten. Okay, I'm going to give it one. <laughs> <laughs> You're just super mean. Anyway, we're talking about yours today. Yeah. So there we go. You heard it here first. But look, thanks very much indeed again for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi Fi Riff. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if so, we hope we'll see you at the very next one. Thanks very much indeed. Bye bye. 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 Take it away, take it away, take it away.